mathematical thought provides a grounding for not only mathematicians, but everyone. If you think of something as simple as the word three, I can imagine someone saw three cows and then three stones and said, hmm, there's some correspondence. And then to develop the noun three from this, that's a big step of the imagination. I came to Harvard as a junior fellow. 60 years after that, I've been teaching at Harvard. To teach math effectively, you have to really understand how your student views things. A teacher of mine said, we're all little mice nibbling on the infinite cheese of knowledge. We're never going to consume the cheese, but it's the love of doing it together and how it shapes us that's important. I began thinking of mathematics as a philosophical explanation of something physical, at least at first. The thing that captured my greatest attention was geometry, topology. Knot theory was one of these things. It was a new world for me. To make a knot, you take a piece of string in space, you just let it loop in and around itself, and then eventually you take the two ends and glue them together. That's a knot. And then you ask, suppose you try to untangle or unravel it without tearing, without cutting this closed piece of string, but just moving it through space. Is it possible that you can make it unknotted? Just a perfect circle, but you can lie flat on the plane. Then it would be an unknot. But there are knots that are not unknotted, so to speak. And in fact, you can then begin to classify them. There's the trefoil knot, there's the figure eight knot. There are various other knots that you can imagine constructing. One of the big issues in knot theory is to understand them when our two seemingly different knots, not different, but uh, actually the same if you can move one into the configuration of the other. Knot theory was an entrance for me to dynamical systems, which led me to algebraic geometry and then to number theory. One of my big theorems is the classification of rational points, and then that developed into a bunch of other things. The arithmetic of the Eisenstein ideal, and Galois deformation theory. There's also the Iwasawa main conjecture with Andrew Wiles and Diophant instability issues. Those are some of the big things. I keep thinking how lucky I am to have met up with my wife, Gretchen. We raised a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful son. He gave us a marvelous granddaughter, Naya, who is now nine. Gretchen is open to everything and opens everything for me. There's her thrilling novels and stories and essays. About Dance with the Wind, definition. When I think of what I would be without Gretchen, all I do is shudder. You could walk upright. There's room for your We've been together since 1960, 62 years. The ancient Greeks said, what is a friend, another self? He gives meaning to everything that is. Life and work, work and life. I didn't teach him the poetry. He's read more poetry and perhaps more fiction than I have. Lurching, careening, descending. Mix them. I know people who have been married to three mathematicians. Mm -hmm. They don't go elsewhere after they've been married to one mathematician. Oh, yeah, we have to find out where our game is. I think it's partly because mathematics has proof. So in order to get ahead, you don't need to step on the face of anybody else. I think mathematicians are the sweetest bunch of professional people. And I think he's the sweetest of them all.
Being a mathematician, I've certainly acquired the taste for the general, but the soul of any particular thing is of course in the details, the way in which a tree fuses its limbs and binds them together. These are the souls of things. You may think that a relationship between two people is a straight line from one to the other. Okay, now we go. But sometimes it's an intertwining curve with beautiful surprises along the way. That is a knot. <laughs>